you are now watching the Friday Night Blitz. Oh yeah! The Steel Knights ready for the final week of the regular season, and so are we. Welcome into the Friday Night Blitz, San Antonio's only 30-minute high school football show. It all comes down to this. Some teams have already punched their ticket to the playoffs next week. Others are on the bubble and are fighting to extend their seasons with a win this weekend. We'll take you through 10 of the biggest games right here in South Texas. But first, we start with our Friday Night Blitz Game of the Week. Our game of the week features the top two teams in District 26-6A, the Judson Rockets and the Clemens Buffaloes. Rockets have been the top team in our power rankings since the start of the season. Buffaloes coming in at number five. Both teams though undefeated in league play, and the winner gets to take home the district crown. Judson quarterback Mike Chandler with a lateral. The pass falls short, but the ball is picked up by Bryce Taylor, and Taylor returns it 36 yards all the way to the house. Buffaloes with the early six nothing lead. Rockets running back to Anthony Lewis though has an answer. Punches it in from nine yards out. Rockets with a seven to six lead and they keep adding to it. This time Chandler with a quarterback keeper from 15 yards out make that 13 to six Judson. Buffaloes though catch a break here. Force a Judson fumble. Clemens recovers it and quarterback Max Domenico takes advantage of it right here. Domenico finds Vincent Perez for the 19 yard score coming into your living room tying the game up at 13 all. Then another rocket turnover would lead to the exact same outcome. Domenico to Perez. No it's not a replay and it's going to be the Clemens Buffalo that come away with a 34-30 win. Hey guys, I'm here with the newly crowned district champs, Clemens Buffaloes. Yes, yes, hey, I, there was a big game out here tonight. They win the game 34-30, led by Max Vanico and Mason Chambers and the rest of the defense here. They all had to come out. Max, what was the key to this game tonight? Our defense. Um, our offense was getting held a lot this game, and our defense made the big stops when they needed it. Mason, you guys came out and took this game when nobody thought you could. What is, was the difference for you guys? Uh, our, our, it's just our thoughts. You know, we came into this game knowing that, that we can do something great. It's been like that since we were young, and we just had to come out here and make it into fruition. What does this game winning mean to this community? It, it's, it's huge to this community. You know, we haven't, we haven't been a district championship since, two, since 2006. You know, it's just a big confidence boost for everybody here. Max, you guys still have some unfinished business, though, don't you? Yes, sir, we do. we got six more games left. Six more games left for those guys, these guys here. They're headed for, they hope, and we all hope, a state championship. Hey, guys, come back later. We'll have more, and we'll have more for you guys tomorrow. Back to you. Yes, sir. Marcus, thank you. We'll check back in with him later in the show. But first, let's check in on another district title game featuring the Madison Mavericks and the Johnson Jaguars. The Mavericks looking to secure a second straight undefeated league title. However, if the Jaguars win, it could mean they share the crown with Roosevelt. Now, Madison, though, is coming out fired up, trampling all over each other, and it didn't seem to hurt their momentum. Daring Gill takes a pitch, books it down the, the sideline, finally gets pushed out of bounds around the 15-yard line, and Mavericks capitalize a few plays later. Navion Cooper flashes the hand open. He sees him, and so does Michael Garza. 14-yard touchdown pass on the flag route to the corner of the end zone. Johnson, though, answered back later in the half. Ben McCreary takes the handoff on the QB read, fools the defense, breaks a tackle, races in from 16 yards out, but just too much from the Madison offense. Darian Gill, again, bursting through the gap, diving into the end zone to put the Mavericks in front. Madison wins 49-34 to to take the title. How about the title? Ivy Antler visiting the Medina Valley Panthers. Both teams looking to help their postseason positioning. Starting the second half, Tyvee up 14-7. Fake handoff by quarterback Trapper Panel, and that's a gain of roughly six yards for the Antlers. But on the very next play, Tyvee finds themselves in trouble. They botch the snap, and Medina's Tanner Bippett recovers the ball off the fumble. Big play for the Panthers because now it's a first and goal for Medina who trails by seven. Quarterback Charlie Marsh hands it to James Gibson for the three yard score. However, it's going to be the Antlers that pull away with this one. They get the 35-14 win heading into the playoffs as the number one seed. Sticking in that same district, Bernie Champion has already locked up a playoff berth, but Alamo Heights can clinch a spot with a win over the Chargers. Chargers, though, not making it very easy. Five minutes left in the first quarter. Chargers quarterback Luke Boyers hits tight end Reed Cantrell corner of the end zone first score of the night. Champion keeps on charging. 
Boyers again. This time, instead of in the air, he goes to the ground, hands the ball to defensive back to Mark Jenkins. Jenkins sneaks past the Mules D, almost fakes out our camera guy. Jenkins races into the end zone to extend the lead, but Chargers not slowing down. Boyers. Uh, hands it off to Boyan Ford. Ford forces his way through for another Chargers score. And then Boyers looking to add one more touchdown just before the break. Takes matters into his own hands. Runs it in with the QB keeper. Chargers unstoppable against the Mules. They run away with this one 42 to 7 in that final. Over at Rutledge Stadium, Veterans Memorial already playing next week. But Sam Houston still has a chance to secure the fourth and final playoff spot in 13 5 8. Sam Houston able to get the first down. Punch off the to Simeon Woodward who gets some room is taken off for a huge gain finds a hole and then some trying to take advantage of the momentum the handoff to running back JC Solitaire Solitaire finds a gap gets through adds a couple more yards on the play and then Veterans Memorial quarterback Kalik Paulette takes care of the rest finds wide receiver Darius Darius Guest in the corner of the end zone for the Patriots touchdown veterans up 17 to nothing they run away with this one 38 to 12 in that final all right let's take a look at a couple other big games from Friday night the Steel Knights secure the third spot in that tough district uh, 26 6 a 35 to 20 win over the East Central Hornets and then Harlandale Indians win 38 to 14 over the McCollum Cowboys. How about the Smithson Valley Rangers big 42 28 win over the New Braunfels Unicorns and then the Lee Volunteers come out on top against MacArthur 52 to 42 that final. All right, let's keep the action going. Rattlers trying to continue their late season surge. Reagan can clinch a spot with a win over South Sand. As for the Bobcats, though, their playoff hope still alive with a win as well. Reagan, quarterback Lance Lorenz looking long, tries to air it out to State and Akron, but it's intercepted by Richard Lopez. Lopez turns on the wheels of 44 yard return before he gets taken down around the 50. Bobcats take advantage. Quarterback Brendan Riojas. Hits Aiden Gomez in the corner of the end zone. Great catch by Gomez. South Sand goes up six to nothing, but here come the Rathers. Reagan running back Carson Green bulldozes through the D, D line for the seven to six lead. But Green just getting warmed up this time. 32 yard line takes it all the way to the house. Rathers win 27 to nine that final. All right, quick look at some Thursday night scores. Jefferson Mustangs win 20 to 7. Roosevelt Rough Riders come out on top 41 to 21 over Churchill. O'Connor Panthers shut out the Stevens Falcons 31 to nothing. Bread and Bears run away with a big one 35 to nothing over Holmes Huskies. Well, stay with us. We're just getting started on the Friday Night Blitz. After the break, we'll continue our high school coverage for more Week 11. Welcome back to the Friday Night Blitz. Still have several more games to get to tonight, including one of the area's most intense rivalries, featuring the Central Catholic Buttons and the Antonian Apaches. The Buttons have won the past four contests and 25 of the last 29 meetings. However, the Apaches are coming out firing in this one, scoring on their first two possessions to take a 14 to seven lead early on. Then less than seven minutes left in the second quarter, Buttons with the ball here, fourth down, 37 yards from the end zone, no problem. Junior quarterback Jaden Velasquez throws it. Aiden O'Connell takes off running, breaks down the sideline before getting tackled. Actually, he goes all the way to the end zone, ties things up, 14 all. Then 30 seconds left in the half, Buttons ball once again. This time, senior quarterback Christian Allen on the field throws. It hits Brandon King to make the catch. King gets taken down on the play, but it would lead to this. Allen again connects to O'Connell again. Another touchdown for the duo. Central would take the lead. However, the Apaches come back in the end to win this one, 41 to 38. Over at the Gus this weekend, big game for Warren. The Warriors can finish in a three-way tie for the final playoff spot, but need to win over Clark first. Warren not messing around. Vaughn Martin Martinez hits Kyle Edler for down the sideline for a nice gain, and then that sets up the Warriors inside the red zone. Samuel Stanford bulldozes his way through another touchdown. So Warren 
takes a 35 nothing lean at the half and continues its dominance from there. Clark just absolutely bottled up all night. Couldn't get anything moving on the Warriors end. War Warren comes on to win this one, goes on to win this one at 63 to nothing. Huge shutout victory for Warren. Now that also means they're in a three way tie for that district. So a tiebreaker is coming their way over over here. Let's talk about the Kennedy Rockets and the Memorial Minutemen. They won't be moving on next week, but they're trying to finish their season with a win in the Salsa Bowl. Minutemen rolling early on. Christopher Cardins up the middle, 22 yards. Then same drive quarterback Joel Lorenzo decides to hold on to the ball, this time heading towards the outside, pushing his way through to reach the end zone, but just a yard shy. However, the Minutemen want points on the board, and they do it. Ball snapped to Cardenas, punches through. Memorial on the board, 6-0. The Minutemen go on to win this one, 28 to nothing. that final. All right, the postseason is all about stepping up on the field, right? And with playoffs kicking off next week, Sports Tonight selected one individual who has helped lead his team to success both on and off the field. Marcus Floyd has this week's Player of the Week brought to you by Air Force Recruiting and AFFCU. This time of the season, it really gets intense, and the players really have to step up. Now, the Air Force and Air Force Federal Credit Union, Friday Night Blitz and Sports Night Player of the Week really epitomizes leadership, toughness, perseverance, and teamwork. Now, who was this week's winner? Take a look. For this week's official Friday Night Blitz, Air Force and Air Force Federal Credit Union, Sports Night Player of the Week, we nominate and elect Darren McKnight. No, he, he, he's a great kid. Um, you know, he's, you know, he started breaking out a little bit last year for us, and then this year he's been huge for us. And, you know, uh, we've been very blessed here to have, you know, some seems like our, our best, our best players have, you know, they've also been, you know, really, really good people. And that, that's the kind of person he is. You know, he does right. You know, not only on the field, but he does right in the classroom and in the community. Well, you know, we talked a little bit about uh, teamwork earlier. And of course, uh, to be a great team, you have to have teamwork. Everybody has to do their part. Uh, but that allows individuals to stand out, and he's definitely a standout performer. Just going to class on time, doing my work, listening, helping others whenever they need questions, keeping class in order if the teacher, if it gets out of hand sometimes, and just being a great leader in the community and then being a senior leader on the team. Great kid, great program. Now. When you're at that game this week and you see with your own two eyes the kid that should epitomize the Air Force and Air Force Federal Credit Union, Friday Night Blitz and Sports Tonight Player of the Week, go to our website at sportstonight.com and click contact us and let us know who that player is. Now, for the Friday Night Blitz, Sports Tonight, Air Force and Air Force Federal Credit Union, I'm Marcus Floyd. The Friday Night Blitz Player of the Week is brought to you by United States Air Force, Aim High, and Air Force Federal Credit Union, Integrity, Service, Excellence. Welcome back to the Friday Night Blitz. One last game to get to tonight over in Taps Division II. The Holy Cross Knights looking to stay undefeated in district play, hosting the St. Joseph Academy Bloodhounds. Knights looking to take their crown with a big win tonight. We'll have to wait and see. Bloodhounds, though, we're looking fired up as the cool weather is starting to roll into town. Holy Cross with the ball here, a handoff to Jacob Olivares. Finds a hole up the middle, takes off, breaks a tackle, and then some finding his way into the end zone. Knights with an early lead. St. Joseph's turn now, third down play for quarterback Luigi Cristiano, who looks for Danny Garza. Plenty of room to run if he could catch the ball, but unfortunately drops it. Time for now for the punt team to come out. John Martinez now sends the ball high, and Holy Cross, Mark Garcia calls for a fair catch, but Unfortunately, he can't handle it. So Bloodhounds recover and a fresh set of downs to play with. Cristiano trying to make that recovery count. Looking for wide receiver Luis Adrian. It's not there. Knights, however, go on to win this one at 56 to 25. All right, let's go back to our game of the week for a moment. Huge win for the Clemens Buffaloes that are now your District 26-6A champions. Marcus standing by with a winning head coach. I'm here with victorious coach Jared Johnson. Coach Johnson, what was the difference in that game tonight? Well, I, you know, it, it really it was just about trying to, 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 to get up off the ground one more time and make one more play. You know, they're such a great football team. They're coached very well, and our, our kids fought their tail off. I'll tell you what, and, and they just kept fighting and believing, and, and that, that was the key tonight. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you have no idea how I 
proud I am of our kids and, and our coaching staff and my coordinators, Mold, Coach Mulder and Lengel, and them guys putting together a, a game plan that our kids executed. And I tell you what, there's a lot of there's a lot of love in that in, in that team right there, and uh, they truly understand what it's like to play for one another. How tough was that Justin team? Oh, I tell you what, it, it won't shock me one bit if if they're in Dallas. Uh, they're, they're a great football team, uh, you know, and and, and you, you, you'll see it. I mean, they're I think they're ranked number seven in the state, and they were number no, number one in the city, and rightfully so. You know, uh, they got they got athletes everywhere, and they'll bounce back, and they got a chance to win a state championship. What does this victory mean for this team, this community? Well, man, I tell you what, it's just it's been a long time coming. I think it's been since 2006, uh, since. And, and we talked about that. And we talked about all that we had never, we, had, we hadn't beat Steel since 2006. And, you know, I don't want to district championship since like 2006. You know, we weren't even predict, people had us four fighting it out with New Braunfels just to get in. And, uh, but we knew what kind of ball club we had. And I'm super proud of these kids. Clemens get the victory and the district championship. Hey guys, we'll have a little bit more for you later on. Back to you guys. Thanks, guys. Speaking of our game of the week, it was standing room only at Clements High School, as you can imagine, and the fans helped make it one of the best games this season. Here's this week's fan camp brought to you by Six Flags Fiesta Texas. Still to come on the Friday Night Blitz, from the UIW Cardinals to the Central Catholic Buttons. We catch up with Catholic head coach Mike Santiago, including his favorite Jimmy Buffett song. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. Plus, top plays of the week coming up next. Just when you think you're growing far from the game, football always has a way of finding you. That's what happened to Mike Santiago after coaching for over three decades at the collegiate level. However, the Central Catholic Buttons had other plans in store for coach. Marcus Floyd has more in our Coach's Connection, brought to you by San Antonio Express News. Hey guys, I'm just joined now with Coach Mike Santiago here at Central Catholic. Coach Santiago, fourth and one, you guys need to score. Do you run a flea flicker or do you go for it and just try to quarterback sneak? How much time's left on the clock? Uh, what's uh, what's the score? What yard line we on? There's a lot that goes into that decision. That's too much. That's too much. That's too much. <laughs> coach, you play. You coach on a lot of different levels. Why come back and and coach high school kids? And what does it mean? Well, you know, I, I had retired out of college coaching after 35 years, and uh, I was out working in the, in the business world a little bit. And uh, this opportunity came up, and Central Catholic and these kids gave me a chance to be relevant again. And I'm relevant in some kids' lives, and and I'm having a ball doing it. If you have fun just being a kind of a, a teacher of and, and builder of men when, when it comes to coaching? You, you know, I hope so. I mean, I get uh, a lot of ex-players that I still talk to. Some of them come out to the lake and sit down now, and, and we have a steak and, and, and talk about the old times. And so it's fun, and I'm hoping to do this with these guys one of these years when they graduate from college. Now, steak, do you barbecue it? Do you grill it? What's the best way to make a steak? I'm a grill master now. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to marinate it, and I'm going to put it on the grill. When do I get to come over and have one of those, Coach? Uh, you, there, you need to come to the crawfish boil out at the lake. Wow, I'm, I'm getting hungry now. Okay, Coach, <laughs> what, do you, what song are you listening to, and what is your favorite artist and song? Well, you know, uh, my favorite otter, artist is uh, Jimmy Buffett, okay. living out at the lake, okay. and any Jimmy Buffett song. It doesn't matter, as long as, uh, as, long as I'm on the boat on the water. Are we going to sing a little Margarita? No, no, no Margarita. No, no, we are not singing, no. Singing no. <laughs> See, you guys didn't know any of this, but you came in and you tuned into the Coach's Connection, and that's what you got. Marcus Floyd, Coach Mike Santiago, back to you guys. 
Thanks, guys. Every football fan knows the games get better and better as the season goes on. And this final week of the regular season is no exception. Here's this week's top plays brought to you by IHOP. Well, thanks so much for joining us and watching the Friday Night Blitz. We have two more shows left, so be sure to join us next week and the week after next for the first and second rounds of playoffs. Have a great night.